Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions. Today we are going to start module 7 that is Thermodynamics of Reactive Systems. So, in this module uh, we will cover two important lectures. First one is Chemical and Thermal Analysis of Reacting Systems. Second one is simplified conservation of equations for reacting flows. So, we will start the first lecture that is uh, on this module that is chemical and thermal analysis of reacting systems lecture number 26 overall lecture number 26 and in this lecture we are going to touch upon the following topics that is constant pressure fixed mass reactor, constant volume fixed mass reactor, steady state, steady flow perfectly mixed reactor and plug flow reactor. So, basically the entire idea or learning components for this module is the reacting systems. So, what does this mean is, is that in an combustion process the reactants vanishes, the products are formed. The conventional uh, equations, thermodynamic equations based on mass, energy, entropy, all these equations are uh, true as long as the system is in steady state or in a transient state. But on top of that, when you uh, think about a reacting systems. In fact, in a reacting system some of the species they form and some of the species also vanishes. Side by side there are some intermediate species they are formed, but they initiate the chain reactions, but subsequently when you look at the overall reactions they, they are not present. Another important segment is that uh, the rate coefficients that generally governs the directionality of these chemical reactions also plays a crucial role. So, overall the kind chemical kinetics and the formation of uh, different species plays an important role in the analysis of reacting systems. Now, to uh, have such kind of systems in place, we are going to couple the uh, governing equations of governing equations of mass, energy and uh, momentum equations with respect to chemical kinetics. That means, we will superimpose the chemical kinetics equation into this. So, this will give a complete overall picture of the reacting systems. Uh, with this viewpoint, uh, four simple simplified models are framed which, which are like constant pressure, fixed mass, constant volume, fixed mass, steady state, steady flow and plug flow reactors. So, our uh, entire intention or in, um, will be to discuss some of the important aspects of this reacting systems. So, before we start let us give some uh, introduction to that what do you mean by coupling reacting systems. If you look at the combustion situations that is fuel mix, mixes with oxidizer it gives the combustion products and uh, with time if you look at the concentration of fuel it keeps on decreasing and the rate at which the pro combustion has products are formed it depends on the global rate coefficient kg and the maximum temperature that can be achieved during a combustion process is defined through adiabatic flame temperatures and this adiabatic conditions can be ascertained by assuming a constant pressure model or constant volume model. So, through this process we can say that when you define this adiabatic flame temperatures, we say that there is no enthalpy of combustion term. So, basically difference between enthalpy of reactants and products they should equalize. When did they equalize? The equilibrium temperature 
what he say, says is that adiabatic flame temperatures. Now, while when we model such kind of systems until this point of time when we have modeled this kind of systems, it all depends on the equilibrium conditions that is reactants where they stand, products where they stand. That means, all the thermodynamic parameters are estimated based on the reactant operating conditions or in terms of pressure and temperature or product of product, product conditions in terms of pressure and temperatures. And we really do not bother how the chemical reaction proceeds, so, but the chemical reaction proceeds through chemical kinetics mechanisms, formation of different uh, species uh, like elementary uh, reactions, uh, and formation of radicals through another uh, elementary reactions all those things. So, when you deal with a couple systems, we try to uh, mix both chemical kinetics as well as the conservation of principles and by conservation principle we mean mass energy. So, when we couple them then we can say that the detail evolution uh, for this entire combustion phenomena can be uh, formulated. So, with the knowledge of chemical kinetics coupled through the conservation of principle allows us for detailed evolution of the systems from its initial reactant state to the final product state, which may or may not be in chemical equilibrium. So, in other words we can say system temperature various species concent concentrations has to be obtained with respect to time as the systems proceeds from reactants to products. Of course, uh, this reaction time, um, time scale is very is a very short duration events and it and we can say it is something like in millisecond durations and in these durations many species are formed and many species also vanishes. So, uh, the chemical kind of kinetics through estimation of rate coefficient will allow us to model uh, such kind of simulations uh, when you go from reactants to products. Now, to do that the uh, there are two approaches that one can design in the first one or the first analysis the thermodynamic system is considered without complications of mass diffusion. So, mass diffusion a term where the uh, a, a species diffuses into other uh, and th through this mass diffusion does not arise in this case. That means, in our conservation equations we will not we will not look into uh, the mass diffusion terms. The second part of the analysis will cover the some of the preliminary mass diffusion effects into the chemical reactions. So, for the simplicity we will now consider the first part where the thermodynamic systems is ana analyzed without mass diffusion. Uh, there are four models that are possible, first one is constant pressure fixed mass reactor. So, it is a perfectly mixed homogeneous reactor. So, as you see in this picture, so it is a constant pressure. So, we have a piston um, cylinder then this particular system is viewed in this manner. So, we have a uh, uh, thermodynamically we can say the fixed mass uh, uh, reactor is modeled by putting a certain mass uh, onto a piston and entire system or gaseous medium is within this uh, cylinder that is reactants as well as the products and this mass allows us that piston does not move that means a fixed mass is experienced by this species. And uh, since and they all these species and uh, and these reactants and products in this domain they are perfectly mixed and homogeneous. Other type of situation can be modeled that instead of fixed mass we can ascertain that we have a fixed volume systems, uh, but in this fixed volume systems the pressure can vary with time. So, so as the reactions evolutes evolution starts 
the pressure can vary with time. But when we say fixed press constant pressure reactor, volume can change, but mass remains same. Another mo uh, model is that well stirred reactor. So when you deal with the constant pressure or constant volume reactor, we try to see how temperature changes with time, how concentration changes with time and in a, per, when it, when a, in a const, pre constant pressure reactor we see that how volume changes with time and in a constant volume reactor we uh, have same con things like temperature and concentration that changes with time but at the same time we look into how pressure changes with time. But in a well stirred reactors we assume uh, that all these uh, things that mean temperature is always constant. Uh, concentration is constant, pressure is also constant. But what happens is that the some uh, it is a steady state, steady flow analysis and in a perfectly mixed. Uh, another kind of reaction is a plug flow reactors that is a steady state, steady flow but no axial mixings. So, basically this is a uh, this is a kind of a duct in which certain gas is passing. So, something like in a aerospace propulsion system like ramjet in combustion or scamjet combustion, some high speed air that enters and fuel is in injected into it. So, it is a completely, uh, so we can say that uh, we can uh, arrest the flow, I mean uh, mixing uh, uh, in one particular direction. So, like in a plug flow reactor, we can model this as a steady state steady flow, but we do not allow any kind of axial mixing. There is no axial mixing, but there can be lateral mixing. Now, uh, out of all these four model, we will uh, analyze one by one, but we will give more emphasis, the, uh, emphasis to the first model and uh, uh, other models will just give the uh, some glimpses that how they are modeled. Uh, so, in the first model what we see is that it is a constant pressure fixed mass reactor. So, we consider the case in which reactants are contained in a piston uh, cylinder arrangement and when they react and they react and uh, at each and every location within the gas volume at same rate. That means, reaction takes place in the entire um, space at same rate. That means, every mass or every species sees um, similar uh, uh, reaction coefficients or kinetics at and in, uh, in all uh, at every locations. Since there is no change in the temperature or composition gradient within the mixture, a single temperature and set of specific concentration is sufficient to describe the, evol the evolution of the systems. Now, if you say that the reaction is exothermic then both temperature and volume will increase and with time and there may, and there may be heat transfer through the reaction vessel as well. Now, our objective is that how we want to model this temperature volume or species evolutions when the reaction proceeds. So, uh, towards the end of the things we will see that we need to find some differential equations with and those equations can be modeled through initial value problem that, that means with the initial conditions they can be modeled. Uh, now, let us understand the basic mathematical concept behind the fixed mass uh, constant pressure fixed mass reactor. The first thing that we are going to analyze is the how temperature evolution takes place during the reactions. So, we consider that Basic, basically, we are looking at temperature, concentration and volume, how they changes with time when the reaction proceeds. Uh, so, first equation that we uh, recall is the uh, first conservation of energy uh, fr from the first law, but here we are looking at the this energy equation in the rate form. Rate form means we are looking in terms of time. So, that is what rate equations are expressed q dot minus w dot is equal to m into d u by t t. And here uh, u term we repress, we express in the form of uh, enthalpy. 
that means we we know h is equal to u plus v b from there we can frame an equation d u by d t is equal to d s by d t minus v d v by d t minus v d p by d t. Now, when we have these equations also uh, the work term that can be expressed in the form of uh, pressure p d v equations. So, w dot by m you can write p d v by d t. Now, putting these two terms uh, in this um, uh, equations, we can say the main equation takes in this form, where we can say w dot by m and p d v p d v term they vanishes, they, they gets cancelled from the both sides. And since it is a constant pressure reactor, we can say d p by d t term goes to 0, then q dot by m uh, takes the form d h by d t. Now, uh, then we need to find out what is this d h by d t. So, for that to do that we recall this tot uh, system enthalpy h specific enthalpy in terms of h by m and in terms of uh, molar form because all our analysis has to be done per mole of the fuel. So, we can write this total, um, uh, total enthalpy as n i h i bar for all the species i is equal to 1 to n divided by m. So, then we can find out what is d h by d t from these equations and if you, if you can see that the number each species are formed its enthalpy is also changes with time uh, and time uh, because the temperature also changes to with time. So, these two terms are function of time uh, and they are related. So, this differentiation can take place in the manner that we can say d h by d t is equal to 1 by m summation of h i bar d n i by d t plus again summation n i d h i by d t. Here we are now going to take some approximations. Uh, till this point of time we have been considering the ideal gas uh, behavior for this mixing systems. So, we can say if you know uh, when you say ideal gas behavior enthalpy is a function of temperature only and, and that also can be represented in terms of C p d t. Where here it is a constant pressure. So, we ri I write molar spe specific heat for species I. So, this is one part. Second part we can also recall the system compositions. Now, try to look into the uh, uh, number of moles of species that is formed and which is nothing but the uh, concentration of respective species multiplied by its volume. So, from these equations we can find out how the um, number of moles for any spe species i changes with time and this is nothing nothing but d n i by d t. Now, we write it as v into omega dot i and omega dot i is nothing but concentration of species change with respect to time. So, putting all these terms in this q by m um, there q by m is d h by d t and from this d h by d t and in this d h by d t equation expression is here and here we have h i term, we have d h i term, then we have n i term and we have d n i by d t term. Putting all these things we are now in a position that after simplifications we frame the expression rate of change of temperature, temperature change with respect to time and which is nothing but a ratio in which the numerator is not is equal to q dot by v minus summation of h i omega i divided by summation of i concentrated x i into C p i. So, here uh, we have to recall our previous concepts how to find out h i. So, h i is nothing but the molar specific heat for species i and it has to be uh, calculated from its enthalpy of formation value through C p times t. C p is also changing with time and the volume also we can express in terms of mass, concentration and molecular weight. So, by putting this we are in a position that we can find an equations 
in which um, we can write how the temperature of the reaction changes with respect to time. In a similar analogy, we can also derive another expressions how species evolution takes place during and reactions. So, here we start with is a concentration of species i dx i by dt. This concentration can be expressed in terms of number of moles by total volume. Then we can differentiate after differentiation we arrive at this expression dx i by dt is equal to omega i minus concentration of x i 1 by v dv by dt. So, uh, means that same concentration of species i changes by two terms one is the, the rate at which it is formed and other is the due to the concentration change with respect to volume. Then further we can write this system equations n i and we can also uh, make ideal gas expressions to uh, and when you do that uh, we can uh, rewrite this particular equations in this manner. That means, we can find from this equation what is 1 by v dv by dt is equal to uh, 1 minus summation of n i summation of d n i by d t plus 1 by t d t by d t. Okay. So, when this equation and this equation when this expressions is used in this concentration term we arrive at uh, another expression that means, how concentration of species i changes with time. So, if you look at these two equations in the uh, and, and try to correlate what we are trying to achieve. We are trying to achieve how temperature changes with the time which we get from this expression. Second one we are trying to see how the concentration changes with time which we can achieve through this and we also see how volume changes with time this we also can achieve with time achieve from these equations. So, we have all these three equations which are needs to be solved simultaneously. Now, to carry out these uh, equations, we require some initial conditions and at initial conditions, you can assume some initial temperature T 0 at time temperature at T is equal to time is equal to 0, what is this initial value? Concentration at time is equal to 0 at what is its initial value. Okay. Now, the solution for this problem requires this new equation is to be solved along with the reaction kinetics to find the uh, I mean we need to program this or we need to some kind of do some kind of programming uh, which can be coupled uh, with respect to chemical kinetic reactions to solve these equations. Uh, we are not going further deep into it because it is a completely different uh, research problems and which are not proper in the purview of this course. Then we will move on to the constant volume fixed mass reactor. Here we are looking at the situation that reaction is taking place in a container which is a fixed volume and we are trying to see how temperature and concentration of species changes with time. At the same time, we also look at how pressure within the container changes with time. But only difference between the constant mass and constant uh, constant volume and constant pressure reactor is that in a constant volume reactor follows closely with constant pressure, but only with the absence of work because there is no PDV work is involved here. But uh, side by side, another important point is that when you look at the constant volume reactor pressure changes with the time. So, it may so happen that when the reaction um, takes place and suddenly we do not take care uh, uh, the uh, materials of this in which the reaction is taking place then it can explode. That means, if the pressure uh, changes with time and it is such that uh, it is the material is unable to withstand that pressure. 
in such cases it can explode. So, for such analysis variation of pressure with respect to time is also equally important. And again it is an initial value problem uh, which can be coupled with reaction kinetics for the solutions. So, here we recall the same equations q dot by m is equal to du by dt and uh, here since it is a constant volume situations we can recall uh, the internal energy and enthalpy can be related through an ideal gas equations also we have Cp and Cb relation in terms of its uh, universal gas con uh, constant uh, characteristics gas constants and the expression for dt by dt is or evolution or, or derivations for dt by dt same as that of constant pressure reactor but only difference is that in the expressions instead of molar enthalpy we have used molar internal energy here again we instead of specific heat at constant pressure we have used here specific heat at constant volume with this only changes one can write the equations dt by dt in this form and since we know that this internal energy or enthalpy are also related so another equations can be for framed by in including enthalpy terms here then uh, now uh, again um, this equation also in this equation also we can uh, look into how the concentration of species i changes so this equation can be integrated simultaneously with rate expressions to find two um, uh, complete expressions uh, that is temperature change with respect to time concentration change with respect to time with same initial conditions and uh, reaction kinetics the systems can be modeled uh, uh, with respect to ideal gas frame of equations and system compositions. So, ultimately there are two equations that needs to be solved dt by dt and dxi by dt with these initial conditions and chemical uh, uh, kinetics other equations that you require how pressure changes with time which we get from an ideal equations dp by dt and which is nothing but the function of this concentration and omega i bar omega i bar is nothing but the um, con change of concentration with respect to time okay so uh, uh, so this is how you are going to solve again the analysis uh, we are not going deep into that but to have some kind of philosophy or glimpses, uh, an example or uh, solutions for uh, by solving a constant volume mass reactor, one can achieve a some analysis. If you look at this particular plot, it shows the how the reaction evolves uh, when uh, in a IC engine and in particular it is an SI engines to predict the temperature, concentration history, rate of pressure rise, knocking behavior for ethane air mixture. So, you might be uh, knowing about trends of the plots much earlier in the IC engine course um, in the thermodynamics, but what where we see is that when you look at those things those are major data and during the engine uh, running operations we can get how the reaction or, or they are basically experimental data which were acquired during the engine operations. But what we see here is the model data and in this model data the fuel that is taken is ethane and it is getting combusted in the air and when it is utilized in an SI engine you can see for, la for let us see for the fuel uh, with time its concentration suddenly drops up may be after 3 milliseconds. If you look at the products that are formed its concentration keeps on increasing with time and um, so on. So, this is the reactants and when it of fuel gets oxidized products are formed and through these uh, things initially the temperatures that is there it suddenly rises once uh, rises after all these things occurs after 3 milliseconds. So, this is the uh, what you say temperature rise. 
Now, if you look at rate of pressure rise, pressure initially uh, you can see there is a steep rise in the pressure close to about uh, after 3 milliseconds and it goes on and you can have a peak pressure at some point, some of the point instantly. So, you can say it is instantaneous pressure. Now, if this pressure is coupled with subsequent operations, you can see some situations if you are fuels and air are not adequate uh, combustion to explain in an adequate manner, we can see the uh, um, unexpected rise in the pressures uh, with time. So, this something this is something like knocking behavior. So, what the significance of these plots is that uh, all these parameters are modeled uh, in a um, through this constant volume um, fixed reactor um, scheme and with this we are trying to predict the different fuel and product concentration as well as the pressure changes with time. The next reactor that we are going to analyze is a well stirred reactor. So, till this point of time it is we are looking at how the reaction takes place with respect to time. So, but in a well stirred reactor it is a steady state, steady flow perfectly mixed reactor. We can imagine that uh, some fuel is some is entering continuously and the mixing takes place in one things and products are leaving. So, after reaction the products are leaving and in, in, in this entire model the temperature remains constant, concentration remains constant and pressure remains constant. But what changes is that the within this control volume uh, um, we are uh, looking at uh, the mole fractions temperature, pressure and volume or we can say what is this steady state value. When something is coming that means in the um, inlet we have certain mass flow rate, mole fractions, it is enthalpy, outlet also you have ma mass flow rate, mole fraction of species and enthalpy. So, it is considered an, an ideal reactor in which perfect mixing is achieved inside the control volume and it is mainly used to obtain the values of global reaction parameters. So, basically it is a um, I mean we, when you mo when it is modeled, it is modeled with the uh, rate the chemical kinetics of um, global reactions not for the elementary reactions that means we are not bothered about the elementary species formations. So, uh, typically uh, um, this kind of reactors are employed for um, um, NOx formation to study the NOx formation behavior, flame stabilizations and here we are looking at the mass conservation of individual species. So, how do you do that? To do that we can say that the we have to analyze the overall continuity equations in terms of mass generation terms. Uh, because chemical reaction transfers from one species to other. The positive generation rate that means within this control volume the positive generation rates indicates the formation of species and the negative generation rate indicates that species are destroyed. Uh, and in our combustion term uh, the generator terms are referred as source or sinks. Source means it is formed and destroyed means it is a sink. So, it goes to the sink and to do this analysis we need to frame appropriate form of equations for each species there may be n number of species. The well stirred reactor well stirred reactor assumes steady state steady flow for which time derivatives expressions disappears. So, how does it look like? we can see uh, uh, here that the outlet mass fraction is equal to mass fractions within the reactor. Since the compositions of the reactor is same everywhere, composition of the outlet of the control volume is same as that of interior. So, through these equations one can write mass conservation of arbitrary species, we can write uh, this uh, rate at which the concentration of 
mass changes with time has three terms one is that is rate at which mass accumulates in the control volume is dmci by dt the first term the right hand side first term refers that is mi dot triple dot v is the rate at which mass of i is generated in the control volume that means some species are generated m dot i in and m dot i normally refers to the inlet and exit conditions the mass flow rate i into the control volume and out of the control volume now uh, this uh, first term m dot i triple dash is nothing can be correlated in terms of its molecular weight and uh, the concentration of rate of change of concentration of species omega dot i okay and this can be written in the functional form and that can be written for uh, um, inlet as well as out, outlet and m dot i we can in we can find its uh, um, the total mass into its um, into its uh, mole fractions m dot i we can find out what is m dot i m i out into its mole fraction y dot i out so putting these equations and here we since it is a steady state situation this term vanishes that means it has to be zero so from these equations we can we arrive at this expression omega i dot is equal to into molecular uh, weight of species i into volume plus m dot into y dot i in minus y dot i is equal to zero and this relations m dot omega dot i and y dot i can be expressed in this manner then moving further uh, we can also find another equations which is the conservation of energy involving how how what is the uh, enthalpy which is going out and what is the enthalpy which is coming in so difference in of this enthalpy multiplied with mass will give you the energy conservation equations for each species so we have energy conservations we have uh, mass conservations so both the equations can be solved simultaneously with uh, uh, for species uh, fractions and product composition constant by the through chemical kinetics and another important term which is normally defined in a well stirred reactor is the mean residence time for the gases so it is nothing but uh, we say that uh, during this as the reaction proceeds certain gases for the for the subsequent reactions to allow there is some residence time for each gases that remains at one particular time so that called that is called as mean residence time for the reactor in the gases so that is defined as tr it is rho times b divided by m dot and rho is nothing but the density of the mixture and this can be calculated from the ideal gas relations by knowing the molecular weight of the mixture okay so the well stirred reactor is assumed to be operating at steady state which means there is no time different dependence on the mathematical models so equations describing the reactor are a set of non linear algebraic equations in the form of species and temperatures so these are nothing but the algebraic equations so uh, now next reactor which we are going to analyze is a plug flow reactor the plug flow reactor is another kind of reactor in which we see that uh, the reaction proceeds as and when the flow is happening you can imagine you can say that uh, the flow is going from one directions that means there is one uh, is direction of the flow is fixed either this flow can be mixture of uh, both reactant as well as products or it can be a situations that the air is entering and fuel is being spread into this medium so such kind of situations are modeled through plug flow reactors but what assumption is says that temperature it says that the temperature pressure those things on concentrations they vary only in one particular direction of course that is velocity that varies with one particular directions and there is no axial mixing so it's a it's a steady flow so there is no time term it's a steady flow steady state steady flow but no axial uh, mixing 
So, the plug flow reactor represents one of the ideal reactor which has following attributes. It involves steady state, steady flow, one dimensional behavior, there is no mixing in the axial directions which implies that molecular and turbulent mass diffusion is negligible. The properties are uniform in the direction of the flow. So, thus a single value of velocity, temperature and comp um, composition allows completely to characterize the flow. It is an ideal frictionless flow. So, that means we can use Euler equations to describe pressure and velocity. Uh, one can assume an ideal gas behavior which allows the steady state equations. So, we can say it is a similar to that of a constant pressure or constant volume models expressed in a, uh, a spital coordinates rather than time coordinates. So, I am not going to um, go deep into details, but just to see that how uh, the four governing equations are modeled. One is mass equations. So, we can say th there is a flow, we can assume some elementally length d x and across that length we can find a control volume. Within that control volume, we are trying to see how what is the fluxes that entering and at what is the fluxes are that leaving. Now, when it is entering, how much force it carries, how much uh, energy it carries and, uh, and this and how many species it contains. So, all these things can be uh, equated. Now, when you, when you equated there we can find four different equations, one is mass conservation, momentum conservation, energy conservation and species conservations. And by doing so, uh, we can solve for two important equations, what is d rho by d x and what is d t by d x and what is d y by d x. So, these three terms needs to be find out and from this equation uh, of course, if you see it is a big equations, but most of the things are um, known and each equations uh, um, can be drawn for individual species and we can find out the, the density change, temperature change and mole fraction change with respect to time. And of course, here also another term that can be find out what is the um, residence time for uh, gases in the uh, with respect to a particular locations. But one significant advantage that it contains the ordinary differential equations and which can be solved with some a certain initial conditions for its solutions. So, in summary what I can say that all the reactions models what you have de described so far are highly mathematical in natures and uh, there are many number of species means number of reactions also will also be higher. So, if you are n number of species there will number of equations will be also n number of such equations and each equations has to be linked with respect to its chemical kinetics form so that to arrive its solutions. So, four models are explored constant pressure, constant volume, well steroid and plug flow reactor and each of them has to be developed with conservation principle linked to chemical kinetics. Through this model the some of the characteristics of thermal explosion that means uh, can be explained related to reciprocating engines. We can also relate the information of how pressure changes with respect to time, so that we can formulate the um, expression for explosion. Uh, so, the understanding of the simple model will benefit the complex and rig uh, rigorous analysis of combustion systems. So, we are not going to um, deep into these models, because it is not in the purview of this course. But however, the fundamental concepts uh, of reaction models and its corresponding chemical kinetics will, will help for the learners, so that they can create their own 
um, combustion models for different chemical reactions. Now, before we proceed, I uh, will just uh, try to solve a very simple problem. We are trying to link this particular concept with a compression uh, ignition engine combustion. Uh, what we are looking at in a CI engine combustion, uh, we all know that in a CI engine combustion, we have a diesel fuel and fuel and air that mixing, um, mixing takes place in the combustion chamber. Uh, in a compressed air medium, uh, the fuel is sprayed. So, we can assume that as if some of the fuel is entering into a combustion uh, model and we can assume this combustion chamber as a control volume. So, we can uh, here we say and if you look at these things, these are different uh, mole fractions temperature, pressure and volume which changes with time pressure and volume and it is a steady state reactor and here we are seeing that uh, we have fixed air or, or we say it is a uh, compressed air and fuel is entering into it and in this case it is diesel and its certain number is given as 41 and out of this we have some combustion products. So, there are uh, many models that has been derived. So, uh, when a diesel engine combustion we all know there is a term called as ignition delay. Ignition delay is like uh, the at certain time fuel is injected but the combustion happens after some time, after certain period of time. And this ignition delay is correlated with respect to UP bar that is average piston speed, activation energy, uh, universal gas constant, initial temperature, compression ratio, initial pressure. We need to and this is a semi empirical relations. And with this engine data, we are expected to find what is the ignition delay period. So, of course, the problem is simple and all the data are given, but only thing is that we need to meticulously find out the different parameters which need which are appearing in these equations. So, in these equations what parameter is required is UP bar average piston speed which needs to be calculated, E A needs to be calculated from this equation with the value of certain number, all other data are given. So, data that are given as P i is 0 point that is initial pressure is 0 0.98 bar that is charge is entering, T i is 40 degree centigrade and this number has to be in Kelvin 314 Kelvin. RC that is compression ratio 16.5, R bar that is uh, universal gas constant 8.314 kilo joule per kg mole Kelvin. So, these data are given what we do, do not know is what is E A and what is U P bar. Now, to calculate this U P bar other engine data is given. What is that? Total number of cylinder is 6, total displacement is 15.6 liter. So, we can say total volume V is equal to 15.6 liter that is 0 0.0156 meter cube and total volume is nothing but uh, number of cylinders into pi by 4 b square that is bore into stroke that is equal to 0 0.0156. Now, B uh, we can say uh, bore and stroke relations is this 
सो वी से स्ट्रोक इज इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट जीरो टू टाइम्स बोर एंड नंबर ऑफ सिलेंडर्स इज सिक्स सो बाय पुटिंग दिस वी कैन से सिक्स इंटू फाइव बाई फोर बी स्क्वेर इंटू टू पॉइंट जीरो टू बी दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन फाइव सिक्स सो दिस इक्वेशन विल गिव यू द वैल्यू ऑफ बी आज जीरो पॉइंट वन वन एट मीटर एंड स्ट्रोक इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट टू थ्री एट मीटर दिस यू पी बार इज नथिंग बट ट्वाइस टाइम्स एस इन टू एन सो दिस इज द टर्म एवरेज पिस्टन स्पीड एंड दैट टू टर्म्स कम्स बिकॉज इट इज ए फोर स्ट्रोक इंजिन दैट इज टू रिवोल्यूशंस टू पावर स्ट्रोक सो टू इंटू एस एंड टू एन एंड वेन यू पुट दिस वी कैन से यू पी बार वैल्यू आज सेवन पॉइंट एट मीटर पर सेकेंड सो वी आर नाउ एबल टू फाइंड यू पी बार देन अदर टर्म दैट नीड्स टू बी फाउंड वॉट इज ई एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी इज रिलेटेड विथ अनदर एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी फॉर द फ्यूएल दैट मीन्स ड्यूरिंग द रिएक्शंस वेन द and the fuel that which is carrying the energy the energy which is uh, during the reactions the chemical bonds needs to be broken as a result the energy which is going to be uh, released is through its activation energy due to chemical bond so this number we can find 618840 divided by certain number certain number is 41 Plus twenty-five. So this empirical relation we say is nine three seven six kilojoule per kilo mole. So in this equation, all the number uh, are known. So by inserting values, one can find out ignition delay. in terms of degree crank angle this is 3.9 degree so ignition delay can expressed in terms of two things one is uh, in terms of uh, engine uh, view point we express uh, at what particular locations the fuel needs to be injected and at what point the combustion takes place so this is represented in terms of degree crank angle now in terms of time this can be converted by knowing engine speed engine speed is 980 rpm now to do that the relation that we can say ignition delay in the seconds we can write ignition delay in terms of degree crank angle divided by rpm that is 980 by 60 this many revolution per second and each revolution means 360 degree per revolution so revolution revolution gets cancel degree degree gets cancel so this number now becomes 3.9 into 60 Divided by 980 into 360, and then this becomes 0.0066 second. And the uh, so ideally the ignition delay is can be approximated as 0.66 millisecond. so in a um, when such a model is done uh, for a fuel uh, we can say the ignition delay that defines the at the time at which fuel is ignited and the at the time the time difference between the time of injection and the time of combustion and in this case it is 0.66 milliseconds 
so with this i conclude thank you for your attention